Cassandra Nova, who is the definition of a butterface because rock and bod babe but oh, look at that grill but there's no way that it would have been okay for them to show that during the super bowl because imagine all of the families sitting around being like hey yeah let's watch the super bowl go taylor swift and then ryan reynolds is like i'm into pegging there would have been a lot of people that probably would have been pretty pissed and been like dude dude now i have to go explain to my kids what pegging is by the way i kept thinking man you know our toupee technology has really come a long way because deadpool had some pretty good used car salesman hair until it gets ripped off by the tva you'll see so let's keep going but speaking of deadpool and wolverine i don't know if you heard there was a trailer that was released for deadpool and wolverine so i figured we can and take a few minutes and just take a look at it because there's some stuff that's going on in this trailer that seems pretty cool. I mean, I, there are some people that say they don't like the Deadpool trailer. There are some people that really like the Deadpool trailer. Uh, I was kind of in the middle on it. I have my reservations about the Deadpool movie and we'll we'll kind of see as, as we're going through, but let's go ahead and let's just kick it off and let's check this out. How many views does this have right now? 17 million views in just a few days here, but here we go. Happy birthday to you. Oh, yeah. All right, okay. Um, it's been a challenging few years, for sure, but I'm happy. That is because of each and every one of you. I'm the luckiest man alive. Make a wish, buddy. So in the in the opening scene there, we saw a lot of the people that we had been introduced to in the first two Deadpool movies. So, you know, you had Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Deadpool's wife. And I always forget the name of the guy who's like, I think it's like Bill. He's like, hey, I'm Bill. I'm going to join you in your Deadpool squad. And then he like promptly gets killed just along with the rest of his squad, just absolutely brutally murdered. So, you know, they're hanging out, they're celebrating. I did think it was very funny when he's blown out the candle in his Deadpool cake, his, his birthday cake, only one candle because Deadpool is immortal. He doesn't really age. He doesn't really die. So it's kind of like, yeah, why waste 30 candles, 50 candles? If you see just one candle for Deadpool's all right. And then knock on the door. By the way, I kept thinking, man, you know, our toupee technology has really come a long way because Deadpool had some pretty good used car salesman hair until it gets ripped off by the TVA. You'll see. So let's keep going. Wade Wilson? Who's asking? Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that supposed to be scary? Pegging isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. So that that was the part of this trailer that when um when I saw this for the very first time, I realized very quickly, well, that is exactly why they didn't actually show this trailer during the Super Bowl. They did a teaser and said, go watch it online. One, it's far less expensive. I mean, the Super Bowl is obviously to get a commercial during the Super Bowl. It's the most expensive potential Super Bowl, like, like, like any type of advertising. It's the most expensive time to run a commercial. So they had to spend less if they got less time, but there's no way that it would have been okay for them to show that during the Super Bowl, because imagine all of the families sitting around being like, Hey, yeah, let's watch the Super Bowl. Go Taylor Swift. And then Ryan Reynolds is like, I'm into pegging that like would have not been chill. There would have been a lot of people that probably would have been pretty pissed and been like, dude, dude, now I have to go explain to my kids what pegging is. So it kind of makes sense. And there's also a lot more like violence and blood and stuff like that in this trailer than I think they would, they would much rather kind of go ahead and just do it as they did instead of putting it um, on the, on the actual tube during the Super Bowl. So now Deadpool just gets captured. People are probably sitting there. What the hell happened? Where did he go? Where'd he go? It's his birthday party. He ran out on us. Mr. Wilson, you appear to have soiled yourself while unconscious. I wasn't unconscious. Who are you? Why am I here? Walk with me. Wait, you are special. This is your chance to be a hero among heroes. To be a hero among heroes. And we saw that kind of slow walk up of Deadpool when he's like in the snow. And what I think they're going to do is they're going to go back to the scene in the beginning of the second Avengers movie or in the very beginning of uh, the Age of Ultron where they're fighting a bunch of the, you know, henchmen in the snow and like Sokovia or whatever. I 
I smell what you're stepping in, Sensei. Your little cinematic universe is about to change. Okay, so there, there was a hint, while it has not yet been officially confirmed, at least I, I haven't seen anything official yet. So now we have a hint as to who the big villain and the big bad of this movie is going to be. And it is going to be Cassandra Nova, who is the definition of a butterface because rock and bod babe but oh, look at that grill so cassandra nova i don't know why this image has uh what's her face or michael douglas's wife uh Catherine zeta jones over here on the right maybe they're like this is a fan casting i don't know but uh cassandra nova is the and i don't know too much about her i don't know like how how deep her lore goes but i know cassandra nova is the sister of charles xavier and they were twins in the womb and they got into a battle where like only one could survive highlander style there can only be one charles xavier kills his baby sister causes the baby to come out as like a stillborn but then it turns out not but like charles xavier used his like telepathic powers in order to uh get out of that jam so that's probably who we're going to be seeing because she has a, a pretty interesting character arc because she's evil super evil to the point where she kills like millions of mutants all in one go because she takes controls of like a sentinel printing machine and i don't really know how they're gonna end up uh playing this but i i had thought about it and like who would be like a decent uh actress to play her and i was like tilda swinton because she kind of has like that alien looking bald headed vibe already but then i remember like oh no tilda swinton was already in the doctor strange stuff so probably not i don't i don't know we'll have to see Magnetic universe is about to change forever and there okay that's another that's another thing that kind of stood out to me is we have a patch and that's here let me share this image so there's kind of like an alter ego of wolverine that we see uh and it looks like he's kind of sitting in some like but likely underground bar and he's doing some recon of some sort you know playing in a poker game that's kind of what's going on so that's what it looks like and i don't know if that's necessarily how we're going to be introduced to wolverine or if that's going to be like an alternate wolverine i heard some uh some people speculating that that could have been like daniel radcliffe to play wolverine which probably would work i mean i just i still want like the short and stocky i want like a short stocky wolverine i don't really want like a tall slender dude i don't know how tall daniel radcliffe is but he's kind of like a skinny enough dude where he could he could kind of play that off we can figure it out i'm the messiah i am marvel jesus yeah so like i said it gets a little bit a little bit graphic and that's why i'm kind of sitting there i'm like i don't really know how i don't really know if this would have been good on the tv during the Super Bowl, but being online, that's fine. And the 20th Century Fox logo, Ryan Reynolds came out and he posted an image of the 20th Century Fox logo when he was talking about, hey, all of these people are spoiling what's going on in Deadpool 3. I thought it was a Photoshop. I didn't know that was actually going to be in the movie. I thought it was like a joke. I guess not. But yeah, I mean, it is, it is for me, an, an interesting thing because it seems like there's a lot of potential homework that someone needs to do in order to enjoy this. It's like you have to go back and watch a lot of Disney Plus stuff a lot you got to go back and watch the two seasons of loki to kind of understand like the tva and what's going on there and it just seems very convoluted but then i was on um i was on a live stream this last sunday night and one of the gentlemen i believe his name is uh it was brahma bull i think is who said it and he was like well you know this could actually be a pretty good opportunity for them to do like a two minute recap to explain to deadpool this is what the tva is this is what's going on this is everything that had been going on with, um, you know, with Kang and, and all of these other characters. And like, you know, it can be a very quick moment to recap exactly what had gone on. Yeah, oh my God. Ooh. Okay. And that's another, that is another piece right here. I had to pause this and rewind it because initially this is, this is so quick. I thought that was a sneak peek at Dr. Doom, but the more I look at it, the more it looks to me like it's just a henchman. It's just a, I would say like a nameless and faceless henchman because he literally is wearing a mask and we cannot see his face. So that's kind of what I think. <laughs> I love this part.
And that also took me a moment to see. So that's that's the actor who played Pyro in the first three X-Men movies. And the last time we had seen him was in X-Men, the third one, The Last Stand. He goes, you know, he's, he kind of betrays the X-Men and he decides to fight on the side of Magneto. So that's like the last time that we've seen him. And it's kind of like, okay, where has Pyro been ever since then? I don't know. Apparently something goes on and... I mean, the way that he's dressed, he looks like he's like a desert dwelling. Like, I, I think there was some discussion that he's going to be um, in kind of like a group of, you know, survivors who are in the kind of void zone. Wait! Wait! <laughs> Don't just stand there, you ape. Give me a hand up. Nope, I'm actually okay. Thank you very much. Nice. Uh, and then another thing that was brought to my attention is the comic book that is kind of torn up that's over here is one of the issues of the Secret Wars. So this is going to be something that is directly going to be setting up the Secret Wars movie. And then, of course, we got to see Wolverine. Let's see if I can get the freeze frame right where we have... I'm actually okay. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, very so close. Let's try one more time. One more time. Okay. Thank you very much. Nope. All right. But there it is. Deadpool and Wolverine. That's going to be the title for this movie instead of Deadpool three or Deadpool and friend or anything like that. Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, cool. <laughs> July, July 26th. So as long as they um as long as they stay on on track July 26th is when this is going to be coming out. So I think it's going to be great. The the thing that makes me the most nervous is they are putting a lot on the line for this movie and I I love rated R superhero movies. I think that's we need more of that. Unfortunately, the box office numbers are just not the same when it's rated R. There's not as many people that can go see it. You're not going to make it a family outing, even though Deadpool and Wolverine and Logan and Deadpool and Deadpool 2 have been a part of like the most successful rated R like superhero movies ever, right? It would kind of stand to reason that seeing as the last time when we saw Logan and Deadpool, they're, they're all rated R. It kind of all works. The question is going to be, is this actually going to be something that can save the MCU? I mean, it kind of takes, it kind of takes a lot of uh, cojones, we'll call it, to sit there and straight up have Deadpool say, I am MCU. See you, Jesus. I'm Marvel Jesus. I'm gonna save everyone and alter that. Like it's it's a they have a lot of confidence considering they filmed like half of this movie and then they got about halfway through, and then there was uh, you know, the actor strike and the writer strikes and all of that stuff, and then they had to resume filming post strike. They had to take that time away. That is it's a lot of um pressure on Deadpool 3, or I should say Deadpool and Wolverine to actually do well. Now, whether or not this movie actually is going to do well, I think it will. I think it will because Marvel Studios is not going to have any other releases really this year. So it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, if Deadpool 3 does not just do so well and make hundreds of million like 500 million dollars they're gonna have they, they should just take the mcu and put it on ice for half a decade and just kind of let everything simmer out it's kind of like how they did it with wolverine i mean we haven't had wolverine in such a long time really since logan and now that he's coming back it's kind of like okay i'm stoked but the question is going to be right are, is this awesome is it awesome that we're getting wolverine again or is it yeah i mean at least wolverine is coming back because the mcu has been so bad lately that's something we'll have to just kind of wait and see i don't really know but i do think it's going to be good if if they're willing to go out and be very upfront and just straight up say like this is the thing that is to save the mcu then maybe but i don't know because a lot of the um other projects that the mcu is working on that we know are in the works like daredevil born again we know they're doing a young avengers there's a lot of other things that are kind of going on right now ironheart 
It's going to be awful. It's kind of like, okay, well, unless this comes out and then they announce that they're scrapping everything that has been in production because Deadpool's rewriting the uh, MCU timeline, I don't necessarily know if I totally buy it. So we'll we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to be very excited when this movie comes up. I'm going to be very excited to go see this. Absolutely, I will go day one. I will do a review on it. I'll kind of talk about whether or not it served its purpose to be the thing that's going to get the MCU kind of back on the right the right track to be successful again. Because, I look, I think that right now DC is going to be having a pretty meteoric rise pretty quickly with stuff that James Gunn is working on. I don't think the MCU, it, it's going to take... It is going to take a lot of quality projects, shows, and movies kind of in a row to get the fan sentiment to go back because coming from where it was post, I would even say like through Spider-Man No Way Home, where they're at now is not great. And they've really ruined a lot of that fan sentiment. I mean, it used to be there was there was like a two-year stretch where it's like everything that's coming out is going to make like $2 billion or like a billion dollars. You can make money hand over fist, printing money make ridiculous heroes. And the thing is, because there was so much hype for superheroes for a long time in the MCU, they were able to really rest on their laurels when it comes to putting together great casting and putting together great storylines and having, you know, knock it, knock it out of the park with the CGI. And they started slipping and that's where they're at. They're slipping, slipping hard. So we'll see what happens with, uh, with Deadpool. 